It's funny because someone called me a white supremacist yesterday on Twitter and I really don't feel like what I'm about to say is going to ameliorate that at all. <laughs> In 2018, there are a lot of terms and classifications that I find annoying, but above all else, nothing irritates me more than being told that I have white privilege. Now, if you're a white person in the 21st century, you have probably had the term white privilege applied to you at one point or another. It may have been somebody trying to put you in your place, invalidate an experience you may have had, or really just tell you that you're too pasty to be important. First and foremost, I find it really bizarre that Caucasians are the only race of people that are not allowed to be proud of their skin color. And really, if we are, it mostly gets attributed to being a Nazi or a white supremacist. Yeah, I, I honestly, I don't get it either. Which is super ironic considering that if you're black and you're proud of being black, nobody calls that black supremacy and then compares you to a black panther. I believe white privilege uh, is just the ability just to be free and white and not have the same type of social economic uh, and social ills as black people have to deal with. I mean, there's, there's no uh, white racial profiling. White people don't get pulled over by the cops just because they're white. Um, they have the ability to, um, you know, show emotion and, and love to their sons without being emasculated. I see that uh, white people have the same struggles and things that we have, whereas black men and women are not taking responsibility for that as they did prior to the civil rights movement. Black people are blaming it on their lack of self-control and self-containment they're blaming it on white people while white people are working hard to keep it going. No surprises here, but the words white privilege actually have their roots in American history. Yeah, so if you're not American and you're using the term white privilege, uh, that's called cultural appropriation and I'm gonna need to ask you to stop. Writers and researchers have argued that the term white privilege existed since the 1930s, when writer W.E.B. Dubois argued that whiteness and white Americans are given a level of social status not afforded to other ethnicities. During the civil rights era and segregation, the term white skin privilege arose, and again it referred to rights and privileges afforded to white Americans during and directly after slavery. Even after anti-discrimination laws were passed in the US in 1964, activists and scholars still continue to use the term white privilege to refer to very obvious structural and governmental discrimination. Damn! It was around this time as well that affirmative action came into play, and for those who don't know what that is, basically it attempted to afford more opportunities to blacks and women to avoid bias and discrimination in particular areas of life. So the education system, the workplace, etc, etc. Let's just fight discrimination with veiled discrimination! I feel like I'm gonna need to explain that joke. So what started happening, and the, the biggest criticism of affirmative action is that it doesn't preference people based on their ability, it preferences them based on their skin color, their gender, blah 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 blah. So let's fast forward 20 years. The term white privilege made a resurgence in 1988 in a paper written by a woman named Peggy McIntosh. Her paper was titled White Privilege and Male Privilege, a personal account of coming to see correspondences through work in women's studies. And it contained over 60 references to the term white privilege and mostly anecdotal evidence of white privilege and male privilege and really had no factual or statistical backing whatsoever. <sighs> Raise your hand if you're surprised that this was all started by a feminist. Put your hand down, no one's surprised. At this point, white privilege was referring to subconscious and unconscious actions that saw whites favor one another and implicitly keep down minorities. During this time as well, the American government started rolling back affirmative action programs. Well, and now it's 2018 and some communist weirdo just told you that your opinions are invalid because you have white privilege. Now, according to the professional victims, academia, activists, researchers, and basically anybody who believes in the propaganda machine, according to these people, and I think this is important to note, white privilege has nothing to do with class, wealth, status, or anything like that. That is correct. Your money, your status, and all those other things have literally no impact on you having privilege. 
You are just privileged because you white. I don't get it either. I love how they determine these things, how you have like academics who are determining these ideas, but they actually have zero like real world value and uh, they, they have no scientific evidence to back them up. They're just like, yeah, so uh, we here at the school of uh, no one gives a damn about my opinion and we are super duper whiny. We have determined that there is a correlation between uh, the amount of melanin you have and how good your life is gonna be. And if you disagree with that, you're a racist. To put that in perspective for you, you could be born into the poorest family in the worst neighborhood with drug addicted parents, be beaten on a regular basis, grow up to be a massive success, do incredibly well with your life, and they will attribute that to white privilege. Conversely, you can grow up in the best neighborhood with the best family, with the wealthiest family. You could be at the best school in the country and end up being a massive drug addict and uh, you would probably be told that it's your white privilege that allows you to buy so many drugs. Your white privilege is exactly why you can buy all that heroin. It literally has nothing to do with the fact that you prostitute yourself. I mean, on a serious note, it is just utterly ridiculous. Ideas like white privilege and microaggression and safe space and so on and so forth are all being pushed by pseudo-intellectuals out of academia. A term like white privilege in 2018 would not have made its way into everyday speech and everyday conversation had it not been for academia and the professional victims on university campuses and in the education system. When someone comes at you with statistics on this topic, I wanna highlight that correlation does not mean causation. And I think Ben Shapiro actually says this much better than I ever could. Okay, first of all, statistical disparity does not necessarily mean discrimination. This is the first thing you need to know, okay? Anybody who's ever been in a statistics class knows that this is true, right? If they still teach statistics and it's not too much of a microaggression. <laughs> so, so statistical disparity does not always mean a discrimination. Right? The vast majority of people who play in the NBA are black. Very few of them are five foot nine Jews. Right? That is not because there is some sort of anti-Semitic conspiracy to keep five foot nine Jews out of the National Basketball Association. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I can't complain that I don't play for the Los Angeles Lakers. Right? This is the, because the reality is that in America, it tends to be just as a general principle, meritocracy rules that's true from the NBA to the halls of academia, and it is certainly true on college campuses. Nothing I'm saying here says this discrimination has never existed in America's history. That would be stupid and afactual. But to suggest that it is a continuing factor in American life that is putting people under the boot of the white establishment is just factually nonsense. The point is that having less melanin does not mean that your life is going to be infinitely better than anyone around you. I naturally find a lot of things really offensive about this term, but part of it is that whenever you've achieved something or you've done really well or you've worked your butt off to get to a particular place and you've climbed the ranks of a company or the education system or whatever, what makes me angry is that then someone will just come in and take that all away from you simply by telling you you got there through white privilege. They're saying that your achievements mean nothing because you got those achievements through veiled discrimination. The other thing that makes me really mad about this is that if you applied it to any other ethnic group and you reverse the roles and you reverse the terminology and you applied it to them, they would be screaming. They would be screaming and moaning and complaining and people would not be very happy and rightly, they would call it discriminatory. But you know what, when it comes to white people, I mean, it's fine because uh, pff, we can just say whatever we want about them and that will never, ever, ever be considered racism or discriminatory because y'all are white supremacists. White privilege, when really you get down to the crux of it, is just a nothing term. It just serves to shut up white people from commenting or talking about particular topics and really downplaying their experiences or the things that they've achieved. By all accounts, when activists in the United States in particular refer to white privilege, usually they bring up statistical evidence and refer to things like why a white person is less likely to get pulled over by a police officer or why black people serve longer prison sentences. So if white privilege was universally applied to everything, then why are there more basketball and American football players who are overwhelmingly black than white? Why are Asian Americans the highest income earners in the United States? Oh no, I got, I've got the answer to that one. It is because they're close enough in skin color to white, so they're like, you know, they've got like 50% white privilege. You're 50% white privileged, yeah. Why do poverty rates in the United States vary from state to state? Why are they not homogenous across one racial group? 
Nobody is forcing the black community in America or Australia to act the way it does. In the United States, nobody is forcing the black community to adopt its speech pattern or to have fatherless homes. Nobody is putting guns in their hands and forcing them to start gangs. Honestly, these are individual choices and they should be viewed as such. Providing a structure of victimhood and taking away personal accountability and responsibility from ethnic groups doesn't promote or encourage prosperity. It just perpetuates mediocrity. The victimhood mentality stifles potential, and I'm sorry, but collectively blaming white people for that is not going to ameliorate that fact. The gaps between success in black people and white people on the macro level really come down to systemic issues in the black community. And really, as far as I can tell, it has nothing to do or little to do with this pretend bias towards whites. In truth, if there is any bias we should be discussing, it is the one that holds minority groups to different standards than the white community. Because seriously, it cuts both ways. If you sag your pants, if you sag your pants and somebody says to you, pull up your pants and you're a white guy, nobody says a word. If you sag your pants and you're black and somebody says to you, pull up your pants, you will be called a racist, right? This has actually happened. David Stern, if you remember, who was the, the head of the NBA, he was actually, it was implied and, and actually said in many cases that he was racist for suggesting that people in the NBA ought to dress in nice suits. In the end, I no more chose to be born white than anybody else chose to be born any other ethnicity. But at the end of the day, I'm very unapologetic for looking like this and for being a Caucasian. I am actually, in fact, closer to beige, if I'm honest. Beige lives matter. I personally hate the term white privilege. I think it's super offensive and I think it's super unfounded. And telling me that my opinions are invalid or what I have to say is invalid or my life was so much easier because of my skin color is also wrong. And it's not applicable to every single white person on the planet. White privilege is a ridiculous term. It is born out of academia, which should tell people just how valuable it is. And really, if people were so concerned with fixing race relations, they would do so not by alienating one group, but by encouraging cohesion. As always, if you like the video, hit subscribe. If you have a comment to make or you disagree with me, that's cool, just don't be rude about it. If you have a video suggestion, um, drop me a comment or send me a message on my Facebook, and I will see you guys next time.